Hey guys, just wanted to jump on here real quick while I was having my afternoon cup of joe. Just wanted to share with you my graded card collection before I start thinning out the herd a little bit. I'm kind of pulling away from the graded cards just because the cards that I collect or that, want to, that I want to have stay in the collection, I don't necessarily need them to be a perfect 10, nor do I really want to have that much money wrapped up in a card that is essentially the same thing, just financially is, is the only difference, you know, based on condition, obviously. But to me, whenever I'm collecting, I'm just starting to just think, well, I could buy the raw version of one card or I could have a perfect 10. The price difference on some of these cards are so drastic that it's like, well, why do I really care? I'm buying it for a collection. I'm buying it to have this piece in my collection. I don't necessarily need that piece to be in the most perfect immaculate condition. So anyway, um, some of these graded cards are gonna start hitting the market um, as long as I can get you know good value for them, of course. But, you know, most of all these cards, I do have the raw versions of them as well. So there's the, uh, the counter of collecting versus, you know, investing, flipping, stuff like that. So anyway, let's look at some cards. All right. First up is the 2018 Top Silver Pack. Uh, one Soto. This one got an eight. I pulled it from one of the silver packs whenever I bought those and submitted that. And that bad boy got an eight. So, not too bad, but, you know, not something that I'm going to sell right now because it's not fetching very much money. But that's okay. That one can stay in the collection for a while. Next up, the 2014 Tops Update. Uh, George Springer. So, I'll probably be letting that one go here pretty quick. Next we have the 2013 Finest of Will Myers. I only bought this one for seven bucks. So, not a bad deal. I wish he would have panned out a little bit more, but I'm sure a lot of other people wish that too. So, then we have the 2015 Bowman's Best of Joey Gallo and Josh Donaldson. It's this mirror image. That's a pretty neat card though. I like that one. That one's very inexpensive as well. All right, some more Joey Gallows, Topps Heritage, in the uh, the portrait form in a tin, and then also the uh, fifty one collection. We have the Chris Bryant. This is the Topps Chrome updated series. See, it's got the sparkle. So I'm just like a Basto lure. I'm like, ooh, ooh shiny, you gotta have it. So I got that one in a 10. My wife actually got me that card. So that is a card I will not be selling. And then we also have the uh, 2015 Topps Heritage. Chris Bryant in a 10. All right. So this is my only BGS. It's a nine and a half of Bryce Harper. And every day I wish that it was a PSA 10 and not a BGS nine and a half just because I don't really care for BGS personally. Just because I think I'm holding a brick in my hand every time I look at this, this card. Sweet card though. You know, I like the leg up variation. Um, obviously the, I think it's the 661A is the big dog, but that one's not it. Still a cool card though. And then this one I just recently picked up a couple months ago, the 2010 Topps Chrome Buster Posey Wrapper Redemption. So I think it's about a good time to start picking up some posies along with your, uh, you know, and some other guys of that caliber as well. All right, next we've got a 2018 Topps Update One Soto. I actually pulled this one from the update box. I actually had two of them. And whenever I submitted both of them, they were both they both came back 10. And I've actually sold one. Next up, 2018 Topps Heritage Mike Trout color swap in a 10. Really like this car. Love those heritage 
Heritage cards just don't get any respect, and I just think they're so cool looking. I don't know. I'm a sucker for them. But, yeah, if you're going to get a, uh, a parallel, definitely you can't miss out on a Mike Trout, that's for sure. So that's one of my favorite cards. All right, next up, another Joey Gallo. This one's the 2015 Topps Chrome Joey Gallo in a 10. Really like, that's one of my, that's probably my favorite rookie card of his. Next up, 2010, or 2013 Topps Update, Christian Yelich. Yelich, Yelich. So next up, 2013 Topps Update, Nolan Arenado in a 10. God, he's a stud. And then we have 2014 Topps Update, Mookie Betts in a 10. All right, let's get to a little bit of uh, some older cards here. 1993 Topps Jim Edmonds in a 10. I think I only paid like 12 bucks for that, but those of you that remember watching him play, man, heck of a center fielder. Too bad you don't really get recognized for defense as much as you do for offense in this game because some of the plays that he made covering that ground in center field, just absolutely amazing. Those catches. So if you don't know who Jim Edmonds is, you know, get on YouTube. Well, you're already on YouTube. You know, after you finish watching this video, search Jim Edmond highlights and you can really see an outstanding center fielder. The 93 Tops Jeter and a 10. Everybody needs that one in the collection. Speaking of studs, the 91 Bowman Chipper Jones. That's just on the plastic, that's not on the case. So that one's in a 10 as well. And then next up, we have the 88 Fleer, Mark Grace. Hey, as a Grace guy, you got to have the Grace rookie cards. Next up, we have the 88, the um, score traded Glossy. Huh. We'll show this one. Here's the 88 Donruss rookies. That one's kind of a more rare one. I don't see that one on eBay very much. So right here, we have the Tops traded. Tiffany and the tops traded just the regular one. Oh, that's bad. And then now for the 89 Fleer. Got that one in a nine. I was shooting for a 10, but look at that. That centering on that was really good. I thought that for sure was gonna get a 10. Really good corners. And in the back, maybe, now that I'm holding on light, maybe that bottom, just like the edging, is it the edging that maybe you got me on the back? I don't know, what do you guys think? I guess it's kind of hard to see in the case and in this plastic um, wrap, but I mean, there's, what is that? That may be on the card, so. Anyway, whatever. And then also we have the 89 Tops Traded. These are my, you know, take with me to the grave cards. These are, you know, these are the ones that, that have more, have sentimental value as long as, as well as collective value to them as well. So the first one, if you've seen my previous video, that is on the plastic. Okay. Um, if you've seen my previous video, I told the story of this Mike Trout. I bought it raw off eBay, submitted it, and it came back to nine. Right now, um, in 2020, this card is doing very well. The cool thing is, you know, I was just talking about going more of the raw route and either you submit them to have them in a nice case and protected and then you're only in the card for well depending on which card you get but like okay like let's say if you buy the raw jeter and you submit it and it was like it was 20 bucks and then however much your submission costs depending on how you submit 
So now you're in the card 20 or sorry, 40, 50 bucks or so, depending on how you did it. And it comes back a nine or a 10. Well, that's a whole lot cheaper than if I was to go out and, you know, buy this in a nine or something like that. Or it adds another dimension of, you know, not only did you open the card, but now you found a raw diamond in the rough that you knew was in good shape. You submitted it and you received a grade that was that coincided with the grade that you thought it was. So there's some gratification in that too. So yeah, you can, um, again, we can talk about this for quite a while, I'm sure. So maybe I'll just make a little note so I can go down that road with you guys about my thoughts on that, if I haven't already. I mean, all right, last but not least, we have the 89 Griffey in a Gem Mint 10. Now, this one is a take to the grave or emergency, you know, we need to buy another kidney or something like that card. All right, last but not least is the 2010, last but not least is the 89 Griffey in a Gem Mint 10. Now this one is a take to the grave unless it's the last resort emergency, selling wise anyway. And what I mean by this, my wife got me this for our wedding in 2015. So for those of you that were collecting Pretty heavily in 2015 you probably know how much this card was and for those of you watching now you know how well it's doing now in 2020 so you know it's funny my wife doesn't collect baseball cards but out of all the cards that I have she has the one that is worth the most so that's kind of funny I just don't know me so this card is obviously has more sentimental value along with the sentimental value of growing up in the 90s. King Griffey Jr. is the man. If you don't wear your hat backwards, then good luck getting the baseball out of the infield whenever you hit it, you know, type generation. So run into the wall, wear the high tops, the black and white Nike high tops. You gotta wear the swing man, you know. So even if you weren't left-handed, you still tried to swing left-handed like King Griffey Jr. So... Yeah, there's a lot of sentimental value to this card. That's equal to the numerical value. Um, but yeah, so this would be, you know, my cornerstone to the collection. You know, like I said, um, everything would have to be in a dire situation for me to even consider letting this one go, just because it just means that much to me. So anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.